So I thought I'd do a bit of a different style video today and go through my home networking setup across the house. Basically a few years ago, I ran um, a whole bunch of ethernet cables across to some different rooms. Um, and I also set up a network attached storage server. So essentially I've got 12 terabytes of usable storage up in the attic. And then any device that's on the network, whether it's uh, hardwired or across Wi-Fi, has access to those files, which I think is a really cool setup. So I thought I'd just show you, take you along the journey, and hopefully you can take something away from this. So the brains of this setup are up here in the attic, so it's a bit of a pain to get to, uh, but it means everything's hidden away and um, you don't hear the noise of the server running, which is great. So up here in the attic, we've got the brains of the operation. Let's go ahead and take a look at the NATs or the network attached storage. So here we've got the Define R4 PC case. I actually reviewed this on this channel uh, many years ago and used to run a Minecraft server in it. Um, but now it runs a software called NAS for free, which allows you to basically pull a whole bunch of hard drives together and then have the um, storage accessible across the network. And there's a few other things you can do as well. Um, hardware wise, there's a Core i5 processor um, and the motherboard used to be out of one of those kind of small form factor, you know, computers that you have in a school or an enterprise. Um, basically took the motherboard out, put in my own RAM, so the 16 gigabytes of RAM there. And then I also put in four, four terabyte Western Digital Red hard drives. So that pulls for a total of 16 terabytes, but um, using NAS free, I put them in a, what's called a ZFS storage array. Um, so that gives me 12 terabytes of actual usable storage. And it also means that one of those hard drives can die and I still don't lose any data and I'm able to rebuild that. So that's a really good setup there. And then I've got that attached via ethernet uh, through to this uh, Archer C7 here, TP-Link Archer C7. Uh, so this is an AC 1750 route, uh, Wi-Fi router. Um, and basically I've got the internet coming in here from uh, downstairs where the internet comes in. And I've also got a couple of things going out. So one of the things connected here is the uh, NAS server over ethernet here. And then we've got a couple of other things. The first one's the Philips Hue uh, hub here. So that controls all the smart Wi-Fi light globes. And then behind that, I've got what's called a patch panel. So this um, is kind of the other end of all the different ethernet ports across the house. We can see at the moment, I'm actually not using too many of them. I've just got three populated there, but I've run about 16 or 12 ports across to the house um, in different places. And so that allows me to hardwire things that, um, that I otherwise either don't want on the Wi-Fi network or they actually don't even support Wi-Fi. So we can see here that um, Archer C7 provides uh, Wi-Fi access to the whole house. And I've got it sitting up here in the um, attic. So it's kind of in a central location across the house. Um, probably in a future video, I do want to upgrade this to a um, multiple access point system across the house because there's points where the um, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal doesn't reach and we're just getting more and more devices on the Wi-Fi here. So this is kind of struggling to keep up with all the different, um, got some Nest cameras and um, some other, you know, smart switches and a whole bunch of TVs and, um, you know, everyone has a few phones and tablets these days. So um, probably due for an upgrade in the near future. So this is where we actually get the internet sent through to the house. So coming into this black box here is a coaxial cable. And this comes from internet here in Australia called NBN. And then that runs in through to the router supplied by the ISP. Um, this router is actually not bad because it, um, it has all the Wi-Fi features which I've disabled, but it also has a um, 4G backup. So if we lose internet through the hardwire, it'll actually revert over to a um, kind of a throttled version of the 4G network that you get in your phone. So that's pretty good. So we're always going to have internet access as so long as we have power. And then we've got one of the cables there running back through to um, the router that I just showed you, the Wi-Fi router upstairs. One of them goes to a computer in this room just to save the hassle of having to run a cable um, up to the attic and then back down for this room. And the other one goes to this uh, power, uh, sorry, to this um, ethernet over power adapter here. So that goes through to a TV in another room where it's really um, not possible basically to run ethernet through the walls. So instead we've gone through this option, which um, works really well actually, just for the one device for the TV. Um, it's a lot more reliable than running Wi-Fi. So here in the lounge room, we've got that TV that I was just talking about connected with the uh, ethernet over power line adapter. And that's just back here. So you can see I've got that nice and um, uh, hit discreetly tucked away with the uh, conduit above it so we don't see all the cables to the TV. And that basically gives us hard, hardwired um, internet access to this TV because we're a bit far from the uh, Wi-Fi router here at one end of the house. Basically provides a solid connection for Netflix or uh, watching other streaming content. 
And so here we've ended up back at the desk and I'll show you where some of those ethernet cables that we saw coming out of the roof end up here in my room. So if we zoom in here and have a look, uh, we've got the TV here obviously and that's got um, Netflix and things built in. And I want a really solid internet connection for that. So what I've done is hardwired it through the wall here and uh, popped it out here at the wall. That there is the antenna cable, which I still need to um, put a wall plate on. But you can see the internet comes out there and then just hooks into the TV at the back here. So nice, solid, um, reliable, hardwired ethernet connection. The other ports, uh, if we zoom out again, so we've got all the uh, computer stuff here. The other ports are just hidden, tucked away near these power points down here. So you can see here, uh, I've got some ports there and I've got some other ones underneath it. So I ended up with 10 ports in this room. Um, and you can see I'm actually not even using any of them at the moment. That was because um, originally when I set all this up, I had a desktop computer, so that needed uh, ethernet and I had a few other devices like an Xbox. Um, and what I actually wanted to do was move my desktop PC up into the attic. And then the idea was um, because I've got three or had three monitors behind me here, I could basically use two ethernet cables um, to simulate or to use the same wires as a HDMI cable. And so because I had three monitors um, and then so two ethernet cables per monitor ends up with six cables to run three HDMI cables. Um, the idea was I could put the desktop up in the attic and then I could run the display cables through these ethernet ports um, to the room here. Anyway, it turns out you actually need, um, even if you run them over ethernet without using a special adapter, um, like HDMI only runs over a couple of meters. So up into the attic was a bit too far for it to run. End up getting a really scaled down um, resolution version basically. And I couldn't hit the full resolution of these monitors. So that was kind of a scrap project. And now I've got 10 ethernet cables running from this room uh, to the attic, which I don't really even use any of them for. But it was a good, um, a good learning project, I guess, running them and learning how to um, you know, punch uh, ethernet cables into the back of wall jacks and also uh, like basically build my own ethernet cables. So the last thing I wanted to show here was the software of my network attached storage. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Basically, you um, once you've set it up, you go to the IP address of whatever the device is, and then you can basically see on this page how I've set it up. So I've got this 14 and a half terabyte um, kind of drive here called pool. Um, and that 14 and, a half, 14 and a half terabytes is what is, what is actually available to me. Um, and in total there's actually more and one of those drives can fail and I can still have um, you know, all my data available. So if I go through to ZFS, we can actually see the pool that I've set up here and that's what I was just looking at. So you've got 14 and a half terabytes. And if we go into disks, um, have a look at this, uh, sorry, management. We can actually see all the individual disks I've got. So we've got four, four terabyte Western Digital Red hard drives here. Uh, I've got the USB that the um, software for NASA Free runs on. I've also got two other SSDs, which I added in, um, in the idea of making kind of a quick scratch disk, but I don't really use that. So now if we go to Finder, and we launch a new Finder window, and then what we can do is if we go into NAS, um, and I've preset this up on my computer, but basically we end up with the storage folder, and anywhere on the internet, basically we can access whatever's in this, um, in this folder. So in this case, I've got a whole bunch of old photos, I've got old uh, videos for this channel, um, I've got movies, uh, music, TV shows, um, even um, backups and things from my Mac. So it's, um, it's basically really useful. Anyone on the network can get it. So across my family here, I've got all our photos in here. And it means anyone else on the network can um, you know, access old family photos or watch a movie from it. And um, I haven't had any problems with you know, streaming movies from it, having the buffer or anything. So it's, it's a really good setup. Um, and for someone who produces as much videos as I do with um, this channel and other work, um, it's a really great kind of backup to have and it means I don't have to save everything on my computer or save them on external hard drives, you know, keep track of which, um, you know, hard drive has which files. So it's all in the one place, which is uh, really nice. So in summary, I've got a few main parts to my network. The first one is where it comes in at the internet through that coaxial cable into that black box, which then converts it to basically an ethernet signal that I'm actually able to use in the house. That goes through to the ISP's router that they provide. Um, and then from there, that goes through to the Wi-Fi router up in the attic, as well as a computer in that room, as well, and plus the TV in the lounge room through that um, Ethernet over power line adapter. We go up through to the attic, and that's where it comes out of that patch panel, goes into the Wi-Fi router, spreads Wi-Fi across to everywhere. From the Wi-Fi router, that splits out through to the network attached storage, as well as the Philips Hue bridge. And then it goes back into that patch panel, down through to the TV up here. So that's essentially my home network setup and I want to do some upgrades in the near future using some ubiquity gear and cleaning up some of that patching and um, setting up some more advanced network configurations. I've got some other devices on the Wi-Fi network here. For example, uh, I've got three different Nest cameras 
and they kind of struggle every now and then. And so I really want to um, basically ensure they have the best possible wireless connection, as well as ensuring all the clients across the device, uh, across the house have a good connection as well. So sometimes in the far room, um, I find that the Wi-Fi drops out or is intermittent. And sometimes when a few different users are all using, um, say on video calls or um, you know, do teleconferencing at the same time, um, the internet quality drops, even though the internet coming in from um, the ISP is, um, is actually really fast. So that shouldn't be a problem. So I'm looking to upgrade and hopefully that'll be a video for the future. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and how my network is set up, give this video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to Technologetic for more content like this.